This is Anna Different Teachers from the Depths, small CIWS or CWIS turret. I'm going to select the 5 meter turret for the CIWS, and that is because. I want this to be able to take down missiles and small planes and so a 3 meter turret is probably going to be a little bit too small and the 7 meter turret or larger will probably won't have enough traverse speed in order to keep up with fast moving missiles. So I think 5 meters will be a nice middle ground. As always place a wooden block in the centre to represent where the turn block is going to be. And then from here, place in as many autoloaders as I can. I'm going to be going for one meter autoloaders, and it's not going to be a very large turret, probably only about six blocks high or so, like that. I'm going to place them right here, and then need to place on the actual clips. So, full solid clips to prevent or to reduce the amount of lag caused, otherwise, all these shelves have to be rendered, and that will cause considerable slowdown and there we go place those like that unfortunately I have less much space for the AI and I need two AI components here one as the local weapons controller so it can shoot down airplanes and the other one the AMCC the anti-missile cannon controller so let's place down local weapons controller and then on the other side I'm going to place down the AMCC Unfortunately, you can't connect them directly to each other as they don't transmit signal between them. You can connect them both via a connector, but the way I've designed this won't allow that. Just move that. Also, what this will allow me to do, because although it is slightly wasteful to utilize two receivers, I can place them on different channels, which for... This one isn't so much useful, but having different channels on the local weapons controller is very useful as it will allow me to configure what they're actually targeting. So I can set it for shoot down fast, small planes rather than going for the same cannons at the same targets as my primary cannons will be. So I'm going to place one block here, and this block, this level is going to be armor actually on the turret. And then one, only going to be one block through the hull. I may increase that to two. Then there's one for the cap. One just to base the cap, then one for the cap, and that's where the actual cannon piece is going to go. Place the advanced cannon piece down, and then begin to put in the gauge increases. Place it down like that, and like that, and that's going to give me a decent amount of cooling for the space I have. What I do need to be aware though is that these bottom two are not directly connected and have a limited connection with inputs. With these ones though, if I place some cooling up like so, I can change these ones, these top three, into belt-fed loaders and add quite a few inputs onto them. And I'm actually going to do that because it will in rapidly increase the fire rate since despite these having three inputs, they still don't fire anywhere near as fast as a auto a belt fed loader. The weakness of the belt fed loader is that you do have to wait for them to reload before they're ready to fire again. But that will mean this gun won't ever stop firing because it has these six loaders at the base which will slowly add in shells. But because I am utilizing it for anti-missile purposes, if I was only using belt-fed loaders, as soon as I run out of ammunition, I run out of my anti-missile defense. So it leaves my ship incredibly vulnerable for the period of the reload. This way, I still ha I should still have a small amount of reloading while the actual cannons themselves <clears throat> while the actual belt fed loaders are reloading. And I can calculate all that out in the APS calculator in a moment. So we're going to go to the max number of barrels of six and going to have a gauge of 100 millimeters. This will allow a decently complex shell and 
the highest number of barrels will mean that all of the <coughs> cooling will be at maximum. So let's just keep adding some actual gauge increases to get the maximum gauge. 100 millimeters there. Brilliant. Now, let us design the shell. The down, and I want the maximum shell I can have, which will be five long. That's because it's 100, 100 millimeters long and only one meter shell. So we're going to have a composite head for velocity, increase this to 100. And for anti missile, I want it to have flak warheads to have the largest radius. Although the HE would do more damage, uh, the radius is pitiful. And yes, the damage is higher, but that radius is so small, it will cause me problems to try and hit anything. The composite head could possibly be replaced with the shape charge, as this would give a, a minimal increase in damage, since this kinetic damage is lost anyway, but it does affect the muzzle velocity. So see there, so it should get a quite nice increase in the muzzle velocity. And this actually can be decreased a bit more because I need a, a time fuse for airburst rounds. And yeah, base, basically to, just to reduce the cooldown. Because uh, yes, the gunpowder does help increase the actual muzzle velocity. The base bleeder will quite drastically reduce the cooldown and only lose a very small amount of muzzle velocity. So now it's time to go tune the gun on the APS calculator. So here we are over on the advanced cannon calculator. I've already inputted the shell statistics here and I now input the number of gun clips. So I have six normal rack loaders and in fact, and I have six belt feed and the auto length modifier is one since they're only one meter ones. And that puts me up to a maximum fire rate of 294 rounds per minute if I add 15 gauge coolers. So it's a very nice fire rate. If I remove that though from the belt feed and see what the fire rate is if I just use 12 three clips at the same space. So 152 and only need seven gauge cooling. Hmm, that would work. But I think the better would be the belt feeds. I could try and put 12 belt feeds to a rather impressive 437 rounds per minute. But big problem with that is the lack of reload time. And as soon as I have to reload, I would be very vulnerable to missiles. So this is a nice little compromise, half half with belt feeds and clips. You can always adjust that slightly. And because when all these auto feeders are out, um, just we're going to be firing, yeah, around about, well, probably 85, because it won't be quite this high due to the complexity factor being adjusted. From about 80 to 90 rounds per minute when the belt feeds are on reload. So still a decent fire rate, I think. So now I know how many gauge coolers to use, and I need 15. So I have one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so delete that. Down to nine again. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. And can in fact add another one down here. So it's fifteen. Excellent. So have enough gauge calls there. In fact, I'm gonna remove that one, put it down there because I need a very, very important thing up here, or just somewhere on the gun. Just like put it up at the top so I can see where it is and adjust it accordingly. Laser targeter. This laser targeter is going to just offset it slightly down. Just like that. And that's so it will always, so I try to have it explode nearer my ship than the target. And that's so that as the missiles are flying towards me, it should give a better chance of hitting them. One thing I forgot to check was how many ammo intakes were required per autoloader. And for these three autoloaders, three clip loaders, I actually only need two inputs. So that is fine there. So this gun is basically tuned and ready to fire now. So let's just add 
make sure they're all loading. Load all intakes. Add a 3x3 Omni Mantlet. And I'm actually going to be utilizing this Omni Mantlet, Mantlet on the gun. Because once again, it will allow a better orientation of the shells as the gun will be able to lock on new targets quick, as quickly as possible and then fire. And accuracy, put it all the way up to max. And now this gun should be working. Excellent. Fired a little bit too fast there. The shells are working. And there we go. Because I forgot to actually set the fire rate. So and things aren't loaded fully, probably because I stopped firing the belt feed loaders. Yep, they're actually waiting to fire. And go, just placing it down the last bit of armoring on the top. Let's just keep the gun that little bit more protected against all my enemies and their explosions and stuff. Because if as soon as this gets hit, it will explode in a rather significant explosion because of all the flak shells. And last but not least on this gun, need to add as much hydraulics as possible, which unfortunately is only one four meters. But it does reduce the recoil quite considerably from 14.7k down to 12k. So it does reduce it a lot. Now I just need to prefab it all on to its own sub-object. So a new sub-object, a one-axis turret, place that down here, place the prefab, and then place it down correctly on the turn block there. It doesn't need to be exact on this one because I am firing as primarily a burst weapon. I don't need it to be purely accurate on the rate of fire, whereas I would normally try and inch out that every little bit of fraction when I'm doing a normal sustained fire gun. So now just to configure the AI systems. So the local weapons controller, and just set at the maximum range, which is only about, well, about three kilometers with this round, but probably gonna just reduce that because, again, using belt feed loaders, I don't want to waste all of its ammunition at long range when having a much shorter range would be better because then more shots land on target. So two kilometers there is max. And for the anti-missile cannon, I'm gonna set it all the way up to the maximum of one kilometer. So that will hopefully mean it can track targets nice and rapidly. Okay, I have just placed a detector array on and so, this can be tested. Let us spawn in just a basic duster to start with, since it has missiles and is a little air unit. So there it goes, turn around. Flak cows are going nearby, shooting it and destroy it before it fires its missiles. Okay, well that's good. You can see that it actually works. Spawn in a drake. So here we go, it's firing. Oh! I haven't turned off the lambs. However, against the actual Drake itself, the flat cannon's doing very nicely. So that is a good thing. Okay, this time. There we go, the cannons are firing, and that's two of the missiles have been shut out the sky. Brilliant. The Drake now is just slightly overhead, so unfortunately, it's not in range. Oh, the missile resurfaces, and my cannon decides to shoot at it. So it takes priority against the missiles and then fires against everything else, which is how I'd like it to work. Go and try against a group of dusters. So there we go. The cannons being, the missiles are getting shot down by the cannons. And then as soon as the missiles shot down, the cannon turns against the air targets themselves, shooting them out of the sky. Admittedly, these are weak, easy deep water guard designs. But the whole idea was to test the viability of having a complete CIWS shooting both air and missiles out the sky. As you can see, even a small little gun like this is working out to be very effective against both targets, against missiles and light aircraft. So it's going to be a very nice addition to some of my ships. So, as you can see, making a 5x5 
APS CRWS turret is not too difficult. It takes a little bit of time to tune it correctly utilizing the APS calculator, but otherwise, it's not too difficult. Thanks for watching.